Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to properly adjust the float in your carburetor. It's very important that the float in your carburetor is adjusted properly or else your engine will not run properly. Now here's an example of a few floats. One is made of brass, one's made of plastic. Now when you adjust the float in your carburetor, what you're actually doing is adjusting the little tab over here. This tab here lifts up or lets the needle valve down in your carburetor to allow fuel or to stop the fuel from going into the carburetor. That's why it's extremely critical that the float in your carburetor is adjusted properly. The carburetor I'll be using today is a Tecumseh carburetor that you've probably seen in some snowblowers, rototillers, and other outdoor power equipment with a Tecumseh engine. Now the float on this carburetor is adjusted properly. This is the proper height that you want and the space between the float and the carburetor body. And when I bring up the float like this, the reason why it's stopping is because the tab on the float is adjusted properly and the needle valve stops it. Now if you work on Tecumseh carburetors, this is a good tool to have. It's part number 670377. And this part here of the tool is the space required between the carburetor body and the float. You know you have the float adjusted properly when you can put the tool in like this and that's the space you have between the float and the carburetor body. So that's good enough here. Now I move slightly when I remove the tool but that's not a big difference. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. If you don't have the tool and you work on Tecumseh carburetors, you can use an 11 64th drill bit and use that as your spacer. Now what I've done is thrown off the adjustment on this float just to show you how to properly adjust the float. And I'll show you right now, you can see that the space is much larger than it should be. I'm just going to quickly show you what to do on this float. If you want the float to go up higher or have less space between the carburetor body and the float itself, you need to push this tab down. And you don't have to remove the float to do this. And I'm going to correct this adjustment with the float installed as well. I'm going to go push the tab toward the float a bit. And you can do this in increments and check it. Now in this case I'm going to use the Tecumseh tool. Or if you don't have the tool, use the 11 64th drill bit. And this is perfect. So now I've thrown the float out of adjustment the opposite way. If you're holding the carburetor upright, you can see that it's going way too high. It's way too close to the carburetor body and it's shutting the needle valve way too late. And now to fix this adjustment, I'm going to go and do the opposite. I'm going to go between the tab and the float and pry the tab downwards like this. Now in this case, I'm going to use the Tecumseh tool or if you don't have the tool, use the 11 64th drill bit. And this is perfect. Now after adjusting a lot of these floats, you're going to be able to do this by eye. You're probably not going to need the tool every time you adjust the float. Now if you're not sure of the setting of the float and you have a hard time getting your engine to run right, you may want to check the proper setting of the carburetor you own in the repair manual. If you don't have a repair manual, then just do it by trial and error. And on some carburetors like the Tecumseh one here, you can get a plastic float, but it also has the metal tab over here and you adjust it the same way you adjusted the brass float. Now on some other carburetors, it's going to be a lot easier because the whole float, including the tab, is plastic. All you have to do in this case is install the float and needle valve, and that's all there is to it. Now guys, it's really critical that your float is adjusted properly because if it's not, your carburetor will actually flood itself, or it's not going to be getting enough fuel in it to power up your engine. So basically the float will float up in the fuel that is in the carburetor bowl. And basically when the float goes up like this, it pushes up the needle valve and stops the flow of fuel. Now at this point here, it's perfect. It would stop the flow of fuel at the proper time. However, if the float is actually hitting the body of the carburetor, it may not stop the flow of fuel from coming into the carb, therefore causing flooding out of your carburetor the fuel will actually leak out of the carb and in some cases go into the engine crankcase and your engine will be constantly flooded. However, if the float was shutting the needle valve at this point, right here for example, and there's all this space between the carb and the float, you will not be getting enough fuel in your carburetor to make your engine run properly. So basically all you have to do is find the happy medium for your carburetor float to make your engine run properly. Now depending on the brand and make of carburetor that you work on, the float adjustment may slightly differ. Now if your carburetor float is set properly and you have replaced the needle valve in seat and you still have flooding in your carburetor, you may want to replace the float itself. I've posted a little while ago a video called how to spot a defective float. 
The link is under the video today in case you want to go watch it. If you do have a defective float and it's taking on fuel, your engine will definitely be flooded all the time. Just a final review. The way you adjust your carburetor float is by either pushing down the tab here on the float itself or pushing it up. Now you may have to do this a few times until you get the proper setting for your carburetor float. And I also mentioned in this video that if you do have a plastic float with a plastic tab, then you do not need to adjust it. And nowadays most carburetors do have a plastic float like this that is not adjustable. So that's all there is guys to adjusting the float in your carburetor. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and Instagram. And have yourselves a great day.